Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, and welcome to the Cradle to Cradle Products Innovation Institute webinar series, Making Positive Impact. Today we focus on built environment and circularity. My name is Christina Raab, and I'm the Vice President Strategy and Development at the Institute, based in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Let me start by acknowledging that many of us are not only faced with a public health crisis these days, but also with deep economic and social unrest. During these heavy times, we appreciate even more that you are spending one hour with us today. And we hope to inspire you and provide a practical blueprint how a better future could look like. I am uh, joined in today's webinar by three leaders from building product manufacturers who will share how they integrate and implement circular best practices in their product design processes and across their organizations and supply chains. I'm very pleased to introduce Dorian van der Wele, Sustainability Manager at Royal Moser. Roxanne Spears, Vice President Sustainability North America at Taquette, and Tina Christensen, Head of Marketing and Communications at Trolldeckt. The webinar will be structured into three parts. We will be starting by with short impulse presentations, followed by a guided panel discussion and a question and answer session. Please submit your questions throughout the webinar in the question and answer box at the bottom of your screen and kindly share and state who the question is addressed to. The Institute, Dorian, Roxanne, or Tina. The built environment has a significant impact on many sectors of the economy, on job creation and the quality of life. The topic of circularity is one of the most pressing to be addressed in the constructions and building sectors, an industry that requires traditionally vast amount of resources and is responsible for significant waste generation and greenhouse gas emissions. The concept of circularity represents a very timely opportunity to shift from linear economy to an economic model in which resources, products and materials are kept in use for as long as possible with maximum value followed by recovery and regeneration at the end of use. The relevancy of the topic is rapidly recognized by industry, policy, and civic society organizations. The European Commission, for example, will launch a new comprehensive strategy for a sustainable built environment as part of the Circular Economy Action Plan next year. Building certifications such as LEED, BREAM, and DGNB begin to include circular principles and product circularity in the building schemes. And sustainable cities and communities have long been an explicit UN sustainable development goal. The key to achieving circular cities and circular building lies with the right choice of products and materials. For a circular economy, it is paramount that products are intentionally designed for their next use and are actively being cycled in their intended use cycles. For such, it is also highly essential that chemicals and materials used in these products are selected to prioritize the protection of human health and the environment. And with that generating a positive impact on the quality of materials available for future use and cycling. A circular system also requires greater collaboration and a common language across all stages of a building's development and life cycle. The Cradle to Cradle certified product programs provides such a unified language and comprehensive approach to design and make products for a safe, circular and responsible built environment. It is underlined by a globally recognized science-based product standard that takes a uniquely holistic approach on the circular economy by covering material health, product circularity, renewable energy and climate, water and soil stewardship, and social fairness. 
The framework is strongly rooted in continuous improvement across bronze, silver, gold, and platinum performance levels, and a verified assessment with a product mark. While all five categories are interlinked and crucial for a future-proof circular economy system, I would like for the purpose of this webinar in particular draw your attention to the requirements for material health. This category ensures that chemical ingredients in a material or in a product have been inventorized, screened, assessed, and optimized for human and environmental health and safety. This is a prerequisite for products to be able to safely cycle through the highest and best channels of use and reuse. For product circularity, the Cradle to Cradle Certified Framework looks at circular sourcing, which means incorporating cycled or renewable content in a product. Circular design, which means that materials are compatible with the intended cycling methods, be it technical or biological, and circular systems by requiring publicly available circularity metrics and information for proper end use handling of the product. This category makes also the bridge from product to business models to infrastructure for circularity. So much uh, for setting the scene. And I would like to now give the floor to our three company leaders to le share with us how they practically and tangibly advance circularity products in the built environment. And we will start with uh, Dorian van der Wele from uh, Royal Mosse. And Dorian, it's now over to you. Thank you, Christina. Uh, thank you and a warm welcome to uh, Mosa. Uh, we are a manufacturer of ceramic tiles for uh, walls, floors and facades. And I'm trying to move to the next slide. which is not really working. Maybe, uh, um, yes, now it is working. So ceramic wall floor and facade tiles, which have been uh, produced uh, since over 135 years uh, here at our home base in Maastricht, the Netherlands. And we, the Mosa family, all 600 of us, think that is something to be proud of. Our location, however, close to the city center and in a residential area, um, and the regulations coming with that, also made Mosa think in an early stage about what was necessary to keep our license to, to operate in the longer run. And that's how our sustainability program started back in 2008. And in a broad sense, uh, sustainability at Moza is three things. First of all, sustainable design. That means when we design uh, new product collections, we keep the principles of cradle to cradle in mind. That means we evaluate very closely which ingredients are suitable for our products and which are not. And for instance, that me, that's the reason why we don't have bright orange tiles in our new uh, product collections, because that's one of the few colors we cannot make without cadmium containing pigments. So, so much for the Dutch orange. That's a pity, but sometimes it requires a bit of extra creativity from our designers. Secondly, sustainability uh, is about responsible production. That's more the classical energy, CO2, and water management parameters. And thirdly, it is about healthy people. Of course, the people working at Mosa, the people living around the company, the people working with our products, such as tile fixers, and also the people living in buildings with our tiles. And when we were starting on sustainability, we thought about 
uh, well, how to approach this. And in the end, we chose for Cradle to Cradle because it has a positive intention. It covers uh, sustainability in its uh, total um, variety uh, and it um, stimulates innovation. And that's how our uh, journey started in 2008, uh, resulting in a silver certification for nearly all of our collections 10 years ago. We also work on uh, LCA, life cycle analysis, and publish environmental product declarations, because that's something else that the market requires. Um, and we're proud that early uh, this year, we joined as one of the few companies worldwide, the Cradle to Cradle version 4 pilot. So, Cradle to Cradle certified in our company means working on safe materials, as I already explained, um, to go for clean and closed water cycles. Uh, it is our vision that we will not discharge any water to the municipal water uh, discharge systems anymore in the near future. Working on energy and CO2 management, because ceramic tile industry is traditionally an energy intensive process. Working on fair working conditions, which is not uh, that difficult because we only produce here in the Netherlands. And last but not least, and this is our main challenge now, to work on circular products. Because uh, maybe you recognize these situations uh, if you've ever demolished a bathroom or a kitchen yourself. Um, ceramic tiles plus adhesive plus back wall construction which can only be used in downcycling applications until now. And in order uh, to contribute to, uh, to the circular economy, that needs to be changed. However, no panic, uh, keep calm and go for gold. And that's what we are doing right now. And to this end, we have um, uh, defined three uh, strategies to uh, work on circular sourcing, circular design, and circular systems. Circular sourcing, meaning we're looking for ways to include more secondary or recycled materials in our product. Circular design means we don't look at the tile uh, only, but at the tile in its application. So including uh, adhesive fixing and back wool, and think about smart ways in which it will be possible to reuse the tile or recycle it in a clean manner after its first life cycle. And thirdly, if those technical challenges have been solved, we also work on circular systems. A lot of people in the market now are talking about leasing. That may be a bit far-fetched for our product. However, um, things like take-back guarantee or deposit arrangement seem within reach. And of course, you will all want to know, are these products already available? Well, uh, you have to be a bit patient, but uh, we'll be back with uh, more news very soon. That concludes uh, my story for now. So um, over to Christina. Thank you very much, uh, Dorian, uh, for this overview. And uh, if you have any questions for Dorian, please uh, put them in the question and answer box. Um, we will address this at, uh, towards the end of the webinar. And with that, I would like to uh, move over to Roxanne from uh, Taket. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. I'd like to get started. Uh, Tarket, well, there we go. Um, Tarket's an international commercial, residential, and sports flooring manufacturer. And these are the numbers behind Tarquette, but they don't really tell the complete story of who we are. When we look at these numbers as a company, we see a global company that has no option but to take action to really reduce our impact on the environment. We wanna provide a safe and healthy environment for our employees, as well as provide our customers with good indoor air quality and safe materials. Um, so that's why we started on our journey to a circular economy business model in 2004. Our company made a commitment to have a holistic approach to sustainability so we could help create a resilient future. Uh, we approach the sustainability goals by being committed to three pillars. Those three pillars are creating a circular economy, only using good materials, 
and exceeding the highest indoor air quality standards we can with our products. When we started using a circular economy as our business model, it was a natural progression for us and one that we thought we had a plan for. We've been recycling vinyl flooring since 1957, and we started a closed loop recycling system for our carpet products in 1994. This was a great starting point, so we thought we were well on our way to following the circular economy principles. Then we started looking at the concept of designing out waste, and that's when we started reviewing the principle of when something is designed, important decisions are made that impact how it is manufactured, how it is used, and what happens when it is no longer needed or wanted. And for Tarquette, this really meant that we knew we had to not only look at our product design, but also the processes, services, and systems we had in place in every part of our operation. Uh, many companies talk about a circular economy as how they design a product, but if you want to move a business to a circular economy, it goes much deeper and involves every part of your business. Um, a great example for Tarquette is our focus on healthy materials. We've always been focused on healthy materials, but we really decided we wanted to dig in deeper, not only to look at raw materials, but have a full design process we could follow as we design products. The cradle to cradle principles gave us that framework, and that's what we continue to use today. Uh, the process allowed us to really design out the waste, remove raw materials that would be hard to recycle or reuse at the end of use, um, and then to also look at how we lower the TVOCs of each product, as well as create products with a long life cycle. Um, as Tarquette developed this um, through the processes, we were, able, we were able to have cradle to cradle inventory and assess 98% of our raw materials. This really was the beginning for us. In this process, it also meant we needed all of our suppliers to follow the same process and guidelines for cradle to cradle. Uh, the process was long. We had each supplier reviewed and asked them to commit to the same cradle to cradle process as Tarquette had. In some cases, it meant parting ways with longtime suppliers and finding new sources who would commit to the cradle to cradle process. So this didn't just involve the design department. We really had to educate and train our procurement team, supply chain managers, and plant managers. And you look at this and you're wondering why we would involve this whole group of organization, but we needed procurement to really set up a process and contract for our suppliers to follow um, because we wanted to make sure we were sourcing the right materials um, part of the cradle to cradle certification is reviewing our manufacturing performance. Plant managers then had to review energy and water use for their facility, facilities, as well as waste generated. I had mentioned you can't just look at product design, but you also have to look at processes, services, and systems. Uh, you can't commit to creating a product that's really truly meets cradle to cradle standards and circular economy principles if you aren't committed to changing throughout your whole organization. And that's what it really takes to create that circular economy for business. Having uh, procurement and our supply chain managers tied into healthy materials meant we could quickly move away from having phthalates in our products. Working with Cradle to Cradle, we went through the process of optimizing our raw materials. Each department then set up guidelines for the suppliers, for the raw materials we would use at each facility. Um, this really created the, the positive impact we wanted and it really changed our philosophy as a business and as an organization and as a design team and uh, throughout our company. Um, those ongoing actions um, helped us by, so that by 2010, uh, Tarquette was able to remove um, phthalates from all the products we manufacture with no difference in the cost to produce those products. The TVC levels, TVOC levels for those products are 75% lower um, than the industry standard. 67% of our raw materials are recycled, renewable to prevent resource scarcity. Um, also, the main side effect that we were very pleased with and that was a goal of ours is to make sure our employees were working in a healthier environment and that we're providing our customers a better choice for safe and healthy products. So those are really the numbers that we care about at Tarquette. And see if we can move on to the next slide. There we go. Um, another example I wanted to share with everyone about moving to a circular economy model is that a, one of the principles is creating products and materials in use to preserve natural resources. So as we evaluated and optimized our raw materials, we were also focused on how do we create a closed loop system for flooring products. To create a closed loop, we needed products that were designed with safe materials, were recycled content from the start, and we needed a program to get material back. This again meant involving many departments. We needed to add in logistics on how we get material back. 
We had to have processes and systems change to know we had a consistent waste stream to provide the 35 to 40% post consumer recycled content we had as a target. We also needed our sales team and our customers involved. We needed customers who really cared about what happened at the end of use for the products and their facilities, which we knew wouldn't be everyone, but we were hoping that as we progress on this, we pull them in further to really engage in circular economy. Uh, we needed them to care enough that they would work with our sales team to coordinate the return of old installed waste. By increasing the recycled content in our products, we were able to lower the carbon footprint of the products as well. Uh, we continue to look at sustainability very holistically and we're um, lowering our carbon footprint, reducing waste to landfill and reducing resource scarcity. Um, and we couldn't do this without first having healthy materials. And that's really where cradle to cradle was the starting of our process, but circular economy continues our process. Um, and when you focus on health and people and planet and reducing your carbon footprint, uh, we looked at using renewable energy. And one of the reasons we did that was our concern was that um, a lot of research has been shown that areas that have high asthma rates are also areas that have the highest number of factors using fossil fuels. So we really want to, again, look at the holistic approach so that we're changing the impact, not only for our products, but the people in the facilities, the people who are using the products and the, the areas our facilities are located in. And sorry, that's just a little bit slower. I want to share a couple of examples of the process that we went through as well as the end result of those processes. So one of them is a product line called Ethos Modular Carpet Tile. We use um, this product really started out um, trying to do make sure we use cradle to cradle principles but also circular economy. And we started designing Ethos in 2004 by looking at waste streams um, as suppliers. We wanted a PVC free product that used a current waste stream that we could reduce um, going to a landfill. We found a film called PVB and that's used in windshields and safety glasses. So we used this as the backing of our carpet product. In doing this, in 10 years, we've been able to divert 41 million pounds of PVB, PVB from landfill, which is equal to 18 million windshields. So for us, it was a real win-win. We were able to create a circular economy with the product, um, but we then had to come think about how do we continue to evaluate this product. Um, circular economy, as well as cradle to cradle, always means optimizing. Optimizing your raw materials, optimizing your process. You can never stop. Um, things change all the time, and you have to continue to grow with that. Um, so in 2017, we started looking at the facility where Ethos is produced in, and we started evaluating our water usage there. We were concerned that it felt like it was pretty high. So we changed some of the processes in that facility, and within two years, we were able to de decrease our water use by 86%. We also started looking at Ethos. Um, we wanted to make sure that whatever we were doing with the product met cradle-to-cradle -cradle standards. So ethos can be installed with the tape system that we made sure was cradle to cradle certified. And then we also do a steam resistant finish on it called Eco Ensure, which also has a cradle to cradle um, certification at a gold level uh, material health certification. And this is um, also a flooring free, uh, free of compounds like PFCs for the steam resistant finish. Um, so when we're looking at it, we wanna make sure it's a complete system from start to finish. Uh, cradle to cradle certified silver for the Ethos product and 58% recycled content. The second product I want to quickly show you is move the next one. Um, is ID Revolution. And ID Revolution's um, is a product we've introduced recently. It does also um, is a PVC free product, but it used the PVB backing, uh, film backing as well that we use from windshields. Uh, so it again is a closed loop system. We use 100% um, renewable energy in the production of the product and is 83% um, recycled, bio-based and raw materials. So this is again um, kind of for us that next step to making sure we're creating a cradle to cradle certified product. We're now at a gold level with this product, which we're very excited about. 
um, and having 83% recycled content in the product and knowing at the end of use, we can recycle it as well. Um, using um, EPDs and LCA on all the products help us have a totally holistic vision for our products. And um, using cradle to cradle and circular economy really have become both our design standard and our business model. With that, I'll turn it over to Tina. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Roxanne. And uh, again, uh, if you have questions for Roxanne, please uh, type them in the question and answer box. We will take a look at them towards the end of the webinar. And uh, before we go into the panel discussion, I'm handing over to Tina from Trolldeck uh, to share her thoughts with us. Thank you very much, Christina. And thank you very much for letting me participate in this panel today. Um, I represent the company Toltec, which is a Danish medium-sized family-owned company founded back in 1855. Um, we have we produce acoustic panels, have been producing these kind of panels since 1935. Uh, the panels are made of wood and cement, cement bonded wood wool panels. Uh, we use only certified wood. Um, we have been cradle to cradle certified since 2012. Uh, we're currently at silver level. We have our production our headquarters in Denmark and now also with sales offices in uh, Sweden and Germany. And let's see if it works now. I want to switch to the next slide. Yeah. Doesn't really seem to work. So anyway, you could help me out here, Christina. Yes, thank you. Oh, could you please go back one slide? I just wanted to, maybe not all of you are familiar with our product, so I just uh, wanted to show you four different references um, showing uh, the use of our panels. The upper left corner, you have a, a German office building called uh, Alnatura Arbeitswelt in Darmstadt. It was awarded the German Sustainability Prize last year. It is also a GGMB Platinum Certified building. Uh, here we have equipped the whole restaurant area with our uh, panels in uh, painted dark gray. And the next picture in the upper right corner is actually from the Google headquarter in Dublin, Ireland. Here we have supplied uh, our panels in natural wood and that building is a LEED certified building. And if you look at the picture on the left side in the bottom, at the bottom, it's, uh, it's from Sweden, it's from Malmö. It's an office building called Eminent, which is actually the first office building in the Nordic countries to, to be well certified. Here we have supplied our panels in natural gray. And last but not least, we have the Cradle to Cradle NGO head office uh, in Berlin. Here we have uh, supplied our natural wood panels for the ceilings, natural wood and different uh, painted panels for the wall claddings. And actually it's, it's rather coincidence that I have chosen um, for office buildings as a reference here because our main segments are actually schools and educational buildings, uh, sports facilities, restaurants, etc. But these are all somehow um, certified buildings or, or no, the Craig to Grail head headquarters, of course. And perhaps we could move to the next slide, Christina, with some help again, please. Um, as I mentioned, we have been cradle to cradle certified since 2012. The journey started 2010, 2011. And originally we were actually just viewing the cradle to cradle as another certification, a verification of our environmental focus, just a, another environmental stamp. But very soon in that process, uh, within the first year, we realized that if we are to be successful with this certification, we have to adapt an, a strategic approach to the certification. So in 2013, we decided to base our product strategy on the Cradle to Cradle criteria, and we published a Cradle to Cradle roadmap that we have since then been um, evaluating, revising once a year, and publishing it. Um, and I. Also need to mention that we have actually, um, the certification includes the total range of our wood wool panels. Um, we have some other products, accessories that we have material health certificates for, but all, of, all our wood wool based panels are cradle to cradle certified. Um, if you could switch to, yes, please. 
I could speak for very long about all the five criteria of the Cradle to Cradle certification and our approach and how we work with them, but I have chosen to focus on um, material reutilization or product circularity, as it's called in the new version four, because that's actually perhaps the most difficult issue uh, or difficult criteria for us to work with. We have a product with a very, very long lifetime, at least a technical lifetime of 50 years. We have examples of 75, 80 years as well. Um, and in our business, in the, in the building industry, we often see confusion between recycling economy and circular economy because of course, um, dismantling the panels and reinstalling them in another building might be very sustainable and very good, but it's still linear. And then it might even perhaps just be better to, to prolong the lifetime in the same building. We have an example here from the airport in Aarhus, Denmark. They had some uh, 40 plus year old panels that didn't really look very fresh anymore. So they repainted them and gave them uh, a longer life. But when we at Toltec talk about uh, take back systems and how we work with reutilization, we focus on the panels when they can no longer technically be used as acoustic panels. Uh, and that's the circularity that we work with. And if we could go to the next slide, please. Because then another very important issue here is the timeline. Because when we talk about take back, when we, the products that we produce today and that are set cradle to cradle certified, well documented, will not be available for a take back system for any near future, perhaps in 50, 70 years. Um, so our issue here is how to document what what is in the panel so that we can sort of store that information for, for future take back schemes. So actually the challenges we're facing today um, is for panels that are not documented, maybe 50 years old, maybe not even our own panels, they might come from other manufacturers because we have a relatively generic product. It's, it's difficult to tell the difference after so many years. Um, and also of course, what has happened to the panel during the lifetime? Has it been repainted and um, is that with some sort of healthy paint or not? Um, so that's a very important issue. And therefore, Christine, if you could please switch to the last slide. We also work in both the biological and the technical circles. Our own production waste, the cutoff uh, um, that we have in our production is returned safely to nature uh, as compost, but that we can, we can only do that as long as we know what's in our products and that we have healthy materials. Uh, therefore, we have for the past few years also been working on another system uh, in the technical circle uh, in cooperation with a cement supplier over Portland um, that when they deliver cement for us, they actually in the same trucks then take some of our off course dust from our production, return them to the production of cement and the wooden part of our panels will then uh, substitute some fossil based energy and the cement part of the panels will, um, will, will be a new raw material for new cement. So that's actually uh, the tape back scheme that we are now working on finding partners to scale it to, to be a real take back system. Um, of course, we will test it in Denmark and then we need to find local partners in our other primary markets. So I think that was about all for now. Thank you very much, uh, Tina, and also uh, to the audience. If you have questions for Tina, please put them in the question answer box and we will come to them very soon. But uh, before we do that, I would like to actually start the panel discussion here and dive a little bit deeper into a few subject matters uh, and start uh, with the questions to all of you. And uh, I will begin with uh, Dorian and then maybe Roxanne uh, could also share some insights uh, and then followed by Tina. And my question is that uh, all of you have uh, successfully designed and also created products for a more circular and safe building and construction sector. And all of you have uh, cradle to cradle certified products at different uh, levels, you know, from bronze to silver uh, to, to gold. Uh, could you share a little bit uh, with the audience here which uh, particular system challenges 
you were encountering in related to the certification of the products or also related to product innovations uh, along the way of the of the cradle to cradle certification and how you did overcome those system challenges and uh, dorian um, would you be ready to to start sure uh, thank you so um, in terms of challenges we started uh, with uh, material health as uh, also explained by uh, Tina and Roxane, this is the, the, the basis of Cradle to Cradle. No certificates without having done your homework there. And uh, as we were the first and only uh, town manufacturer who were going for Cradle to Cradle, that was really new to our suppliers. So in the beginning, and I'm talking uh, 10 years ago now, they were really wondering what this was all about and why we were wanting to uh, uh, implement such strict uh, criteria for, for testing and for knowing exactly what was in the product. However, uh, meanwhile, uh, they have learned, we have learned, so this is an ongoing dialogue, so business as usual. Uh, second challenge is about uh, our uh, energy uh, management because we need high temperatures to make good tiles. So and both energy efficiency as well as uh, switching to renewable sources is an ongoing challenge. And uh, well, the most um, hot topic currently in our company, uh, as I explained, is the product circularity. So um, yeah, thinking about new ways of uh, fixing and disassembly of uh, tile constructions in such a way that the tile can be reused as a tile, preferably or uh, in a useful application at an equal ambition level, uh, so to say, because like uh, Tina's product, also ceramic tiles have a technical lifetime of over 50 years. Um, so it's no problem to leave them where they are and to use them, but sometimes the emotional life cycle is uh, much shorter. So for that, we need to find a smart solution. Thank you, Dorian. And Roxana, which uh, system challenges uh, did you encounter throughout the Cradle to Cradle certification and how did you overcome them? I would say our biggest challenge was having, making sure that our raw materials, healthy materials met the Cradle to Cradle standards. As Dorian said, you know, reaching out to suppliers, getting them to make those same level of commitments. Um, 10 years ago when it was still something fairly new was a little bit more difficult. But that we found moves a little bit slower now. We're very careful. Our procurement um, department is very careful with what we review and what we'll accept. So that has helped. We put processes in place and so we have a bit more control there. Um, I, would, I would say for us that circularity part of it, um, we have flooring products that are in school systems and they can usually be there maybe 10 years, maybe 20 years. But at the end of it, um, because it's such a visual in the building product, um, it, a lot of times it's color. You know, the color's gone out of style or the design has gone out of style. Um, in one school system um, here in the US, uh, this summer they wanna um, remove 2 million pounds of carpet. And so what do you do with those products that have been in 20 years, have legacy chemicals that you don't want back in your product? Um, so for us, it's really trying to find partners who want our waste stream um, that they can use uh, in, a, in a good way so that we know that it's encapsulated, it's not gonna cause any damage to the environment as it's being reused. Um, and then finding our own waste stream that is um, a healthy raw material, but also waste. So uh, I think those are the difficult part and it's, it's really connecting and making sure that our customers understand at end of use um, that that process has to be managed as well. It's not just purchasing the product, but it's a full life cycle. And sometimes I, I think customers and building owners kind of forget that part of it. They're just doing demolition. Um, but to us, that is very significant. Uh, two, two million pounds going into the waste stream is just not acceptable. Thank you, uh, Roxanne. And uh, Tina, what are your experiences on, on challenges with uh, the certification and how, you over, how you're overcoming system challenges along the way? Well, as, as I think Doreen and Ro Roxanne both mentioned, the material health criteria is the absolute first. It's, it's very important. So 
um, actually where we have spent the most effort uh, and worked the most is actually the innovations that we haven't introduced because we simply cannot accept innovations that do not meet the material health criteria. We have a material um, and sulfur ceiling that has to meet some very high um, fire requirements and, and we do not want to use any fire retardants that do not uh, qualify for the material health criteria. That's one side. Um, and then we have um, our natural panels in, in natural wood and natural grey could have actually achieved gold level a uh, long time ago if we had chosen to split up our certificate. But since we also sell a lot of painted panels, uh, we wanted to include our standard colors in, in one certificate. And here we have to work very directly, very intensively with our paint supplier because we do not produce paint. Um, so we're working very intensely with our supplier to try to changing their recipe. Um, actually, the, the issue is some biocide that, that keeps the paint from rotting. We have found different alternatives, but the way we paint our panels, we actually, when we spray the panel, we collect the over the over the rest of the, the paint and reuse it, mix it with new. So if we did, if we don't have this biocide, we'd have a waste. Uh, we have actually reduced our waste of, of paint by some 50, 70% uh, by this, this way of, of painting. So it's not just the certificate, it's not just the goal level, we also have to avoid creating more waste. So that's actually our biggest challenge at the moment. Thank you. And I would like to uh, take another round of questions and turn back to uh, Dorian. And Dorian, we have heard how important, um, of course, material health is and how it goes hand in hand with circularity. And uh, increasingly, there's also the recognition that uh, circularity uh, is really at the heart of the climate action. And uh, in our framework, we have uh, categories besides the product circularity and the material health, also the renewable energy and climate category. So how do you practically address the linkages between product circularity, material health and uh, climate? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting question and one that we are working on every day. Um, well, because the whole world seems to talk about circularity right now, but oftentimes when you dig a bit deeper, uh, it's about uh, cycling toxic stuff, and that's what we don't want. So, um, yeah, th that's um, a, a nice ambition, and at the same time, it's, it's also difficult sometimes, because uh, you cannot just um, uh, open up to recycling of um, materials from whatever supplier, because you don't know exactly what's in your product. There might be uh, non-approved ingredients. So that that's, uh, asks for uh, other strategies. Uh, same thing with uh, adhesives, for instance, where uh, in many cases there's also ingredients that we don't want. So yeah, this is, a, this is a, um, as I said, a hot topic one that we are convinced we can uh, find a solution for because we also recognize that uh, circularity and climate are closely connected and that circular uh, products and solutions can really contribute to tackling the climate targets. Um, we're also uh, currently redoing our life cycle analysis, so closely monitoring where the environmental impacts are coming from. and. Um, uh, identifying the hotspots and working on them as well. And we see some nice uh, surprises. For instance, sometimes it's thought that when you sell your product further away, for instance, we, of course, we are a Dutch manufacturer, but we sell in 50 countries, so also in the USA, uh, where now uh, local sourcing is, seems to be important. And um, we've analyzed uh, the impact of transport and it looks like that's much less than, uh, than we expected. So that's uh, good news. On the other hand, there's also some other things that have more impact than we suspected. So uh, yeah, there's some, uh, some work ahead, but uh, as I said, we'll, we'll be back in, uh, in a couple of months. 
Thank you, Doreen. Really looking forward to that and curious um, what will be in the, in the next few months' time. Um, Roxanne, um, you had mentioned in your presentation that uh, Cradle to Cradle uh, certified framework also informs your business strategy, and we know that Tarket also has linked its business strategy to the sustainable development goals. So, um, how um, does the SDG implementation uh, benefit from circular practices? And how uh, do the circular practices and also the cradle to cradle principles accelerate your progress uh, towards the sustainable development goals? Um, thank you, Christine. Uh, TARCAT was one of the original signatories in 2015 for the UN uh, Sustainability Development Goals. And that was impactful to us as a business because it really opened our eyes to following the circular economy, but also cradle to cradle impacts, not just the material we're using, but as we look at, for instance, uh, renewable energy, which is one of the sustainability development goals is clean, affordable energy. Uh, we look at how it impacts a community, um, increased asthma in communities that have high factory usage. Um, if we're pulling water supply, if we're taking raw materials from that community, are we creating an, an inequity for that community? Um, are we creating jobs? Are we creating resources, social fairness? All of those things are part of looking at making sure we're aligned with the sustainability development goals. And I think also uh, helped us be more aligned with them through using Cradle to Cradle. With Cradle to Cradle's five criteria, social fairness, water use, energy use, as well as material health are all part of that criteria. If we're uh, pulling raw material from a certain area and creating resource scarcity, how does that change the economics of that market or that area? As we look at uh, buildings, um, a lot of times sustainability buildings are going into higher income areas. Are we really creating products that are affordable at all levels so that we're creating more equity so that buildings can be built in all communities? So I think the alignment um, for business practice is really helpful with those sustainability development goals and falls in line very well with Cradle to Cradle. Um, and using the two together has helped us progress very quickly into meeting those goals. And I think um, not only looking at the, the goals as just um, one goal individually, but when you pull them together, it's really about creating that resiliency for the future. And I think without that, uh, we can't as a business be successful and, and grow economically if we're not looking at that resiliency. Thank you, Roxanne. And I think resiliency is, is really the approach uh, moving forward also in a post pandemic uh, world. Um, Tina, you had spoken in your uh, presentation a little bit um, already to the role of uh, some of the actors uh, in the ecosystem and supply chain of the built environment, like a uh, demolition um, in industry, yeah. for example. And uh, could you share maybe some more details here how at Trolldeck you work, for example, with architects or contractors or also mm. um, pro project developers and owners? And uh, how, how which uh, which uh, relevance it is has uh, for um, the product certification and the innovation processes? Yes, um, thank you, Christina. Well, actually, this uh, addresses also the SDGs um, number seventeen with the uh, collaborations because we are a medium-sized company, and and uh, what we have realized is that we cannot we cannot be successful alone. We produce. Um, acoustic panels. We don't even have our own transport. We work with logistic partners. We have to work with the demolition industry, with the municipalities, with the architects, if we are to succeed with a circular economy. And um, we participate in, in a lot of uh, aspects in this, in this matter. And also in trying to develop a, a first of all, Danish and Nordic uh, material passport so that you can actually use a building as um, a material bank, but then you need to know what exactly is in the building, where is it placed and how to, how to uh, dismantle it again. And that's some of the projects that we're working on at the moment. 
Thank you. Um, so I'm now uh, screening the question answer box here. It's really excellent. We have received a lot of questions, I see, from, from all parts of the world, uh, from, the, from the North America, even South America, Asia and Europe. So um, we will be going to answer a few questions here. And uh, as said, we will see that to some of the other questions we can get back maybe in the follow up to the, to the webinar. And um, I see here a question which is basically addressed uh, to all the participants or all the speakers and I think it's an important one uh, and it's asking um, how do you manage the reverse logistics to get uh, the materials back for circularity? And I think it's a question relevant for all the speakers. Um, is there anybody who would like to start answering? And I see that Tina is unmuting uh, herself, so I'm <laughs> yeah. volunteering uh, to to speak to that topic or start speaking yeah, to it. Yeah, would. Well, that is actually one of the very big issues because, as I mentioned before, we don't have we do not have our own transports uh, for delivering our our products, and and we definitely need to have collaboration with the demolition industry, with the logistics partners, because that's there core competence that's de demolishing buildings the whole logistic in it and we just have to facilitate solutions that makes it a business case for them actually to return um, the waste to the to to be be used uh, for circularity for this production of cement instead of just going back to to incineration plants so that's what we're working on making it it worth a while for them actually to establish the system. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I see, I see Roxanne, you're also unmute. Would you also like to comment? Sure. Um, I would agree that that is one of the hardest parts of circularity, circularity is to have that reverse logistics. Um, for us, it's, it's working with general contractors, it's working with demolition, it's working with the flooring contractors, as well as the owners of the facilities and um, really finding that uh, written, having it written into the specifications that there's management of the current existing products that are installed is helpful. Otherwise, uh, the demolition team comes in, they remove everything before anybody has a chance to really make a stand on what needs to be removed and separated to be returned to a facility. Uh, we do have um, what we call a restart program, and under the restart program, a flooring contractor can register their project with us saying that they want to return um, any product we produce. Sometimes it's competitor products, and we will take those back as well. Um, but then that creates a whole other issue is that we don't know the ingredients of those products or even our own products coming back that were produced 20 years ago. Um, again, is that legacy chemicals that we can't take a chance on and we have to be very careful of how we actually then process those. But we feel like um, as a company, we produce those products and we're obligated to find um, a healthy source to reuse the products without sending it to a landfill. Um, but it's really making those connections. It's, um, it has to be important to the architect and designers when they're specifying new materials so that old material comes out in the process of the demolition. Um, but it also has to be important to the general contractors that they're willing to help manage that process because it does take a little bit more time and coordination. Uh, but something we, I think as the built industry really needs to work on as developing better processes there. Thank you. I'm um, seeing another question um, which is directed towards Dorian and Tina and it relates to the topic of packaging. So, of course, uh, this is an interesting question. So we see the cross-cutting nature of sectors here, built environment, of course, packaging is another very big sector, Cradle to Cradle certified is active. And the question on the packaging here is, Dorian and Tina, uh, would you please shed some light on how do you approach or plan to approach packaging for your products from a circularity uh, point of view? And uh, Dorian, would you like to start? Sure. Well, uh, our products are all packed in a um, uh, carton, uh, folding boxes or pre-folded boxes. Uh, we use uh, Euro pellets and uh, plastic uh, shrinking foils. So that's all materials that can be uh, easily recycled. There's no color printing whatsoever on the cardboard boxes. So this is already uh, uh, recyclable. 
Thank you, and Tina. Um, our panels are delivered on uh, on panels that are reusable, and actually in Denmark we have a very well functioning system for taking back the panel, the pallets. Sorry, the pallets. It's not Euro pallets, but it's uh, reusable pallets. Um, I don't think we have so far established the reach the take back system for the pallets on other markets, but that's of, of course something we have to work on. Um, the pallets are wrapped in plastic, but it's uh, not something that we can reuse, but it's actually recyclable. Thank you. And I would like to go now in a, in the last question round before we close the webinar and uh, to start with you, uh, Dorian, and then uh, move towards Roxanne and Tina. Uh, if we now look into, into the future, how do you see your company's uh, cradle to cradle certified journey progressing in the next uh, five to 10 years? And in general, how do you anticipate the demand for circularity will evolve in the built environment uh, moving forward? Uh, well, uh, as we see uh, MOSA uh, de developing in the next years, it's, uh, we are moving from uh, a tile manufacturer, which what we have done for so long, into a supplier of uh, ceramic surface solutions. Um, so first of all, uh, looking into the product, the system and then also the, the business model. So it's, uh, it will be a much more dynamic uh, business environment uh, that, we, uh, that we see uh, coming up. Um, in terms of demands for circularity, we see a lot of difference between uh, countries and areas. For instance, in the Netherlands, uh, literally um, almost every customer is talking about circularity. Uh, whereas in, uh, in other countries we see uh, more focus on uh, carbon footprint and life cycle analysis uh, for the time being, with uh, circularity taking some more time before uh, getting its full uh, traction. So that requires from us also a broad uh, approach for su sustainability. However, cradle to cradle will always be like uh, the umbrella and uh, the general uh, guideline for our uh, sustainability strategy. Thank you. Um, Roxanne, could you provide an outlook for us, please? Sure. Um, I've, most of my focus is for North America, so I'll kind of give a review for that market. And there are certain uh, key cities um, in the TNA uh, North America that are focused on circular economy. Um, not as focused as we feel they should be. We feel that um, as cities are developing new building standards that it really needs to be written into building codes to be more acknowledgeable of the circular economy and looking at healthy materials and looking at how a city truly lays out its foundation as they develop new buildings. Are they resilient? Are they maintaining a circular um, vision for those projects? So I see that as, as very important as we move forward. I think that um, for Tarket as we develop new products, we're uh, trying to be very conscious of um, continuing to assess our raw materials because there's um, so many new products coming on the market at all times in terms of materials we can use. We wanna make sure that we're always looking at what is even better. Um, we can't keep the status quo, it always has to be improving. And I would say continuing to solve the logistics issue to make that um, a value to customers mm -hmm. and to building owners as we move forward, I think is important as well. But I think, um, I think it's very positive. I think that uh, the cradle to cradle impact is, is being seen in North America and the value for it. I don't think as a building industry, we can be um, singular focused. I think it still has to be holistic. Um, we can have carbon neutral products that are not made with healthy materials. Uh, and we, so we have to have it all encompassing. It has to be healthy materials to start with, whether it's carbon neutral product or otherwise, but it always needs to start with the healthy materials. Thank you, and uh, you know, thank you. I absolutely agree, Roxanne. I think the future will show some uh, even more intense collaborations because for a material, uh, building material producer as Toltec, we are so dependent on the material health and the carbon footprint of our suppliers' products. 
So we will work even more intensively with our suppliers and, and um, try to make them change their recipes and, and adapt the cradle to cradle uh, criteria for their innovation because that's uh, absolutely necessary for our development, for our innovations. And I also see, we believe we will see some, some new collaborations, some symbiosis in, because we're so traditionally in, in our industry focused on, on the building industry, but we have to start collaborating also with other industries, demolition industries. We have, we have to see these cross sectors um, collaborations if we are to, to establish a circular economy. I think that's some of the things that we will see in the future. Thank you, Tina. And uh, we start, I would, uh, on behalf of the Cradle to Cradle Products Institute, like to really virtually applaud and give a big thank you to all speakers and panelists, Gorian, Roxanne, and Tina, and to all of you for participating in and contributing to this webinar. Should uh, any of your questions have remained unanswered, please feel free to contact us by the email that you currently uh, see on the slide on the screen. We will distribute the recording to all registered participants and the recording of this webinar will also be available on uh, the Cradle to Cradle Products Innovation Institute website. The Making Positive webinar series continues throughout the summer with sessions dedicated to material innovation in fashion, as well as clean and responsible beauty, reflecting uh, the sector's uh, Cradle to Cradle certified uh, works in. We hope uh, to be with you then again. And meanwhile, uh, I would like to wish you strength, optimism, and a very positive outlook for the weeks and months ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you.